A reading from Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, my Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf tender and good and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. The one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Oh yes, you did laugh. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh. oh, yes, you did laugh. <laughs> it occurs to me that if our image of God doesn't contain the God who would say something like that, then we need to do some new work on how we view God. Oh yes, you did love. Our reading from Hebrew scripture today is about hospitality, it's about laughter, and it's about wonder. And all those themes, all the conversations are in this context of Genesis 18, verse 1, the Lord appeared. We should pray that as we worship, and pray and sing together, the Lord will appear. 
But in this passage, we're reminded that in the common run of the day, as we sit and reflect, as we go about our business, in the very ordinariness of life, the Lord will appear. In fact, that same word is used earlier in Genesis when um, Moses is involved in the very ordinary business of tending the sheep. And how does the Lord appear? In that burning bush. One of the things I love about this story is that Abraham and Sarah are not yet settled in a new place. They're still on their journey from Ur to the Promised Land. Genesis mentions some 17 times along the way when they have to stop. This is the 12th, but not the final location. And you see the beauty of this, that Abraham and Sarah, who are themselves journeyers and travelers, can offer hospitality to other people also on a journey. So the Lord appears as the strangers approach Abraham's tent. Now the great rule of the desert amongst all the nomads was to offer hospitality to the stranger, the nomad, the wanderer. In a place that's marked by dryness, aridity, heat, loneliness and danger, hospitality is highly valued. In the next chapter of Genesis, the great sin, by the way, of Sodom and Gomorrah was the sin of inhospitality no matter how some choose to read that chapter. Friends, for many, this world is a desert place, marked by aridity of companionship, the heat of stark obligations, loneliness, and if not physical, then spiritual and emotional threat. A report recently said that people are actually dying of loneliness. How can we not offer hospitality? We who have been so generously welcomed by the Lord with such generous generosity and constant faithfulness. Welcoming the stranger is central to the life of faith. And yet not all churches and not all church people are marked by genuine, disinterested hospitality. Oh, you can't sit there. <laughs> now, I'm going to share with you a very stark comment that's going round at the moment on social media. And I quote, It's not your body or your blood. It's not your table. It's not your church. It's not your invitation. You are the servant. You are not the master. You don't assemble the guest list. You were appointed an ambassador of the good news, not a bouncer at the door of Club Heaven. Abraham models for us the way of hospitality. Five points, briefly. Hospitality is best offered by us from a place of our own serenity and acceptance. The story is told of the man who was standing outside a church trying to get people to come in and he had this very grim face as if he was in the midst of so many tensions. Nobody would stop, and eventually one person stopped and said, he looked at him and he said, I'm sorry, I have enough problems of my own. <laughs> Abraham was just sitting there, remembering probably the ways that he has travelled, just sitting calmly on his porch, maybe nodding off in the heat of the day. He was a hundred, by the way. Secondly, Hospitality is best offered as we pay close attention to the stranger. Notice how Abraham looks 
and then looks again at the visitors. Genesis uses two words. He looked up at them and he saw them with great care. Thirdly, hospitality is best offered without hesitation or second thought. Despite his ancient and possibly arthritic knees, he runs. He runs from the tent to meet them. Fourthly, hospitality is costly, generous. Just look at that lavish fellowship that Abraham offers his guests. I wonder what Sarah thought about that sudden demand upon her time. <laughs> what begins with the offer of, would you like a little water and some bread? Suddenly becomes a feast with a calf, tender and good, curds and milk. And then fifthly, hospitality is offered with respect. Do you notice how well they are seated and enjoy that meal? Abraham stands ready to serve him. As our evangelism or welcoming committee plans for the future, they will remember these holy characteristics of hospitality. Just as we have been welcomed by the Lord and continue to be welcomed, so we want to welcome and continue to welcome others to this place of worship. But friends, as they say in those television commercials, there's yet more to come. You see, the hospitality extended to strangers by Abraham and Sarah is now extended to a new and surprising challenge. Your wife Sarah will have a son. And what is first received by the laughter of unbelief will one day be received by the laughter of belief as their son is born and they name their son Isaac, which means in Hebrew, he who laughs. I can imagine the Lord with a twinkle in his eye and a, a chuckle at the divine absurdity saying, oh yes, you did laugh. Are you, am I, ready to welcome, to be hospitable, not only to the new person before us, but to the new challenge or the new promise that the Lord offers us? I want you to think on this during the week. That verse is anything too much, too hard, too wonderful for the Lord. Remember Blessed Mary, who though not laughing, said in similar vein, nothing is impossible with God. Finally, there is an irony of pathos and sadness that on this Father's Day, as we celebrate the story of Abraham and Sarah and the miraculous birth of Isaac, we know that there are couples like Abraham and Sarah. We know that there are couples who struggle with infertility, never able to have children who expend life and energy, income and emotion on their personal quest. And for such dear folk we pray that they may know the Lord's comfort and welcome. God's journeying people who we are depend upon the hospitality of others. And it's this circle of mutual welcome, of setting tables of bread and water, providing safety and shelter that is the crux of the divine promise, the birthing place of the commonwealth of God. Friends, in the example of Christ and the power of the Spirit, let us welcome the stranger 
but let us also be open-armed welcome to the new and promising challenge of the Lord. For we are never, never, never too old to know the Lord in fresh and exciting ways. Blessed be the Lord. Amen.